welcome back. In this video, we discuss the Naive Bayes algorithm. First, we'll run it on the Titanic data that we used in the logistic regression video. We'll read in the data and pre-process it the same as we did for logistic regression, so I won't show that here. To run Naive Bayes, we need to load library E1071 and run the model on our training data. Here we're predicting survived as a function of age, passenger class, and sex. When we echo out the model, we get all of the probabilities that it learned from the data. It used Laplace smoothing, we'll talk more about that later. And our prior probabilities of not survived is 0.617 and of survived it's 0.38. Then we have conditional probabilities for our predictors. So our conditional probabilities are divided into the three classes in the two conditions of y equals 0 not survived and y equals 1 survived. For example, the probability that you did not survive and you were in passenger class 3 would be 0.66. The probability that you did not survive as a male is 0.84. For quantitative predictors, we get the mean and the standard deviation. Next, we predict on the test data using parameter type equals class, make a table, our confusion matrix, and find our mean accuracy. So our accuracy is 0.7865, which is slightly better than we did for logistic regression. If we look at our probabilities extracted here in the environment, we see that it's a factor with two levels. If we use parameter type equals raw instead of type equal class in the predict function, we'll actually get the probabilities. Naive Bayes is very easy to interpret because we can see the probabilities that it extracted from the data. How did it learn these probabilities? Calculating joint probabilities for all predictors with a chain rule would be mathematically intractable. The simplifying assumption of naive Bayes is that each of the predictors is independent. This allows us to simplify the calculation as follows. This simplifying assumption is usually not true, but naive Bayes works surprisingly well and is often a solid baseline for more sophisticated algorithms. The algorithm requires a single read through the training data to estimate parameters. This is as simple as counting. For the prior probability of each class, we count the number of observations in each class and divide by the total number of observations. This is the maximum likelihood estimation. For qualitative or discrete predictors, we get its parameter by counting the number of observations for each level for each class and divide by the total number of observations in the class. It's possible that some of these probabilities will be zero, which would set everything to zero when we multiply for each predictor to get the likelihood. A solution to that is smoothing, which involves adding a little to the numerator and denominator. The value added to the denominator, m, in this formula is the number of categories of x. If L equals 1, it is called Laplace or add 1 smoothing. There are many variations of smoothing algorithms. Recall that Naive Bayes told us it used some variation of Laplace smoothing. For quantitative predictors, we use two parameters, the mean and the variance of the distribution. Let's look at an example of applying Bayes' theorem. Suppose that a given test for cancer has a sensitivity of 80%, which means that if you have cancer, it will be positive with probability 0.8. If your test is positive, does that mean you have an 80% chance that you have cancer? There are other data points we need. One, the probability of a false positive rate for the test, which is 10%, and the overall probability of having cancer, which is 0.4%. By plugging in the numbers into the theorem, we see that the probability of actually having cancer given this positive test result 
is only 3.1%. Now that we know how Naive Bayes works, we could code it up from scratch. In Notebook 7.2, we load the Titanic data, perform Naive Bayes, and extract the probabilities. We also extract the probabilities of the first five test elements. Calculating the priors is as simple as subsetting the data set to be either survived or not survived and dividing by the total number of rows. And we see we get the same prior probabilities that we got from Naive Bayes. The likelihood for qualitative data is calculated as follows. We first go through each class in an outer loop. Then in an inner loop, we go through each factor level. The likelihood for the class given that survived equals yes would be the count where the factor is that level and survived is yes, divided by the total number of counts survived given yes. Here we calculate the likelihood for each passenger class, and we do the same thing for sex. Here we print out our likelihoods, which again match up with what Naive Bayes algorithm learned, and here we print out our likelihoods for sex. For quantitative variables, we have to compute the mean and variance. We're going to look at the equations we looked at earlier to help us calculate the likelihoods for quantitative data given the mean and the variance. Finally, we have a function that puts all that data together in the Bayes theorem. The function takes three arguments, passenger class, sex, and age, and returns the raw probability of survived or perished for that observation. The num s and num p variables calculate the likelihood of survived or perished based on passenger class, sex, the prior, and the age. I put the age last since extracting it was lengthy code-wise. The denominator puts together the likelihoods for survived and not survived times the priors. Again, this just normalizes the likelihood into probabilities. Applying this function here to the first five test observations gives us the same results as we got in the R predict function. I have an extra notebook in the GitHub comparing Naive Bayes' performance to logistic regression on a breast cancer data set. I want to talk about the difference between the algorithms. Logistic regression directly estimates the parameters to probability of y given x. This is called a discriminative classifier. Naive Bayes directly estimates parameters for the probability of y, your class, and the likelihood of your data, the probability of x given y. This is called a generative classifier. These two algorithms converge towards similar classifiers on larger data sets. In general, Naive Bayes will do better if the data set is very small. Naive Bayes has higher bias but lower variance than logistic regression. The strength of Naive Bayes are that it works well with small data, it's easy to implement and interpret, and handles high-dimensional data well. It's not bogged down by many predictors. The weaknesses are is that it's usually outperformed by other classifiers for larger data sets. Also, the naive assumption that the predictors are independent sometimes can limit the performance of the algorithm. This chapter had quite a bit of new terminology, and as usual, we have our quick reference for how to use naive Bayes, showing two different ways to build the formula. One is with the traditional way we've always built the formula, the other is just to have a predictor column and the target column, how to extract either raw or class predictions, and also a reminder of how to use caret.